All right, so let's go through how to set up a parametric vice in Fusion 360. So I've got this Lang vice here that I downloaded from their website. Well, first of all, it comes in sideways, which always drives me crazy. So let's fix that real quick. I'm just gonna select the whole thing, make sure we're selecting with component priority, and then click M on the keyboard. And we're going to set the pivot by the origin. Turn that over 90, looks a little better. So the, the first thing to note here is when you import, I think this is the X underscore T model. We want to open that up and make sure that design history is not on. If you right click up here at the top, you can see capture design history. It shouldn't be on by default with an imported model like this. At this point, we're gonna clean up everything because we don't want our model to look like this. Do that with a design history off and we don't need to record any of this stuff. So first things first, kind of drag stuff around to see what I'm dealing with. I uh, just click and drag. So there actually isn't that many pieces here. And a lot of this model is this stuff that personally I don't need. I might keep the Lang logo because it looks nice. So let's go back by doing Command or Control on Z. Get it back to where it was. I'm going to hide by selecting each of these things and clicking V on the keyboard. Hide the major objects. And I'm going to select all of these and just click delete. And you can see already that we have a ton less stuff in our tree over here. So let's turn that all back on, shift select the whole tree and then right click, show all components. We've got that down to a nice little set of pieces here. I'm gonna take one of these and rename it and call it stud. And I'm gonna take these other three, right click, isolate. And actually, if we do a select body priority, do that. open up one of these, we should be able to drag all of them in at once into the stud. We delete these other parts, the other components, hide that. Um, we're gonna shift select, turn everything back on with V again, turn off the C. So I'm gonna call this the base and that in the center, we're gonna call the screw and maybe post. And then we've got jaw. So I'm gonna turn off anything that I'm not messing with. So we're gonna call this top one here. The rest of this should just be logo. I'm gonna make sure I'm doing body priority still. Select all these objects, open up one of them, and then click and drag into logo. Now I believe if I look at the rest of these, oh, it didn't work. So I'm just gonna go through and open up each one and drag it in. There we go. So the rest of this here is just a bunch of empty components. So I'm gonna shift select all of them, hit delete on the keyboard. If I turn everything back on, basically in the state that I want, we've got components for each item. We're gonna use a little trick here called joint origin. If you haven't used it before, it just gives us a place to select from on a component that isn't part of the feature by default. So we're gonna select between two faces, click once on either side, and we're gonna select down here at the mating face of the base and the jaw. So you can see now I've got a selection that's at the bottom, but I actually want the jaw kind of like flush face here to be where that actually is. So I know that this is X moving in and out. So I'll make that back to zero, but then I wanna click the ellipses here and click measure. And we're going to select this face and this face, and you can see it moved out. Instead of having to go measure that myself, it's actually one millimeter. It's a good way to measure something without having to like inspect and then come back and enter in the amount. I don't, it seems to be repeating in a weird way, but that is totally fine. Push okay. And now we've got our joint origin associated with this component. So now we can do a joint between the jaw and the base. And we wanna select the jaw first and mate that to mate uh, and joint that to the base. So select the joint origin. And then for component two, we're gonna do between two faces and select the inside face of the base. And then I'm gonna start in the center here. So find any one of these points that's the center of the base. And now it's going to slide in and out directly in the center. 
push OK. Instead of actually dealing with the second jaw, which seems to be actually called one, we're just going to delete that. That's fine. Instead, we're just going to mirror this. So if we click mirror, and we click our jaw two, we're going to go then find the X, Y plane here. If you select and hold, it's actually called Y, Z. And so now we've mirrored that about the center. So now how do we go about moving those? Go open parameters. We're going to create a parameter and call it jaw open. And I'm going to say it's 75 millimeters. Now we're going to go back, right click, edit the joint that we just made and enter in for X jaw open. It's actually the wrong direction. So we want that to go negative jaw open. And you can see that it's a little too far. So what do we do wrong? We're going to go in and edit the joint. The amount the jaw is open is actually half the movement. So if we divide that by two, we now have 75 millimeters between the jaw that's open. So if we open up our parameters, scale this down a little bit, 25 or 100 millimeters, obviously it would depend on your vice's capabilities, but we've got that parameterically driven. We can add a whole lot of other stuff to this too. Now that's the first steps of making our vice parametric. All right, so if you've seen my video on configurations, you know that this is a game changer. So what we can do with this vice, these jaws are actually flippable. So you can flip them from an inside to an outside configuration. Let me show you how to do that with the configurations. So up here we have a new series of options called configurations. Go watch that video. I'm not gonna go through all the configuration ideas right now, but for the vice, we're gonna click configure and we're gonna open up the new table that we can then set up our configurations with. Configurations in a simple sense are saved states of fusion. So you can do suppressions, you can do pretty much anything you can think of to select. So we're gonna add an aspect and that's going to be suppressing this joint that we were using previous. So I'm just left clicking on that in the timeline and then I'm gonna select suppression. So I'm gonna rename this so we know what it is. So that to be the inside, I'm calling this the inside configuration of the jaws. So we'll call that inside. And then let's make one more, rename and call it outside. So now we've got these two configurations and when we have outside, configured, we would suppress the joint. And so now you can see in the timeline, it'd be a little easier to see here, that the joint is suppressed. So now they're just free floating. What we can do is select this to make a new joint, do between two faces. And I'm wanting to select right down here. Then we're going to do between two faces again, same thing, inside face of the base and we'll select somewhere in between here. It's gonna move in kind of a weird way, but that's fine. It's just gonna be on the opposite side. And that's good for now. We actually need this joint to be back here in the timeline, so click and drag it. Now you can see we've got our outside configurations of the jaws. You can see the configuration options up here in the tree. Click the down arrow, and we can flip those jaws from inside to outside configuration. If you wanted to control these separately, you could create another parameter called like outside, oh, say it's 25 mil, right click, edit the joint, edit your jaw or your X, outside jaw open divided by two. So now we can control those separately. You could also just use the jaw open and use it for both, it doesn't really matter. So now we've got two separate saved configurations. You see the timeline here is not happy with me. So we need to add this other joint. Doesn't really matter all that much, but I like to keep it clean and not have these yellow marks and not gaslight myself into thinking everything's fine. So we're gonna go up to configurations and then we need to add the other joint as an aspect. We're gonna suppress this one. We'll call this outside. And then if you guessed, we're gonna suppress the opposite. If we go back and forth between outside and inside, we now have no more complaints in our timeline. And this is a huge feature. This is all derivable into your different cam models. So if this is your Rob Lockwood TM container method vice model, well, 
this now is completely different for you to be able to drop into your setups, obviously easily control your vice moving in and out. So there's a lot more features we could do here. If this was helpful for you, definitely make sure and like this video, maybe share it with somebody that might think this is useful too. That could really help us out. You can also get this download of this CAD model with the parametric and configurations all set up in the description below on our website.